Good morning again, and welcome back to the Hobby Dude 007 channel. We're here again on the patio at the Batson Farm. I told you yesterday I was going to dig up that photo album, and I found it. This has a lot of the pictures from uh, a lot of the models I did before the digital age, when it was all on film, and uh, I've kept a scrapbook of some of those old bills. I'm going to get them out and get some clearer pictures of them real quick, and I'll be right back. Stick around. Okay guys, a little background on what we're going to be looking at. This photo album was pre-digital, so most of us remember that you, know, you used to have to go buy film and then you had to uh, hope that your light settings and all that stuff was right. Take it and have the film developed and then uh, put them in your photo album. Well, that's what these are and you'll see a lot of black and white in here too. Um, I got a new 35 millimeter back in, I think it was 1990. So a lot of these pictures weren't taken until 90 and 91. But the cars you're going to be looking at, um, some of them were built in, um, I think the 71 Petty car was built in 86. Uh, I've got a Petty Ford, not Talladega, which we'll get all, to all that when we get to it. Um, I think that was built in 88. This was built in 88, 89, and I think this was built in late 89, 90, right in there. But let's get into the pictures, have some fun. And like I said, I apologize in advance for some of the quality because it wasn't so great. But hey, let's have some fun anyway. Okay, guys, first up is a Hardy's car. And I wanted to do the Thunderbird version right when uh, they switched from Monte Carlo over to the T-Bird. So I had the decals out of this kit. And by the way, if you remember this kit, it was pretty bad. Um, I think this was the one that had either the Monte Carlo nose, or all three. The Monte Carlo nose, the Grand Prix nose, and the Buick Regal nose all in it. So you just put whatever nose on it and you had the car. Um, but I wanted to use the decals out of it. And I used the Wrangler Dale Earnhardt T-Bird and I came up with this. And yes, it's in black and white. Um, I had about three rolls of black and white film that I had to use up, so I used it up on this stuff, just playing around. And I wish I would have taken pictures of this car in um, color because I was so proud of the paint match. I kept the one of the Hardy's decals in my pocket and went to the store and I was in a um, department store called JM Fields. It was kind of like um, Walmart or, or Kmart, something like that. And uh, I always matched up, tried to match the paint. And I found a, a can that matched absolutely perfect. And it worked beautifully. And um, I used some MSC products to uh, wire up the engine. And I'll, I'll talk about those a little bit more in a minute. Um, to wire up the engine and again i wish i'd have taken color pictures of this because it really was cool uh lowered the stance a little bit and i was really tickled to death with this car and um let's get over to the next one and it is a uh started off with the folgers monte carlo and uh, the tim richmond car and when the aero coupe first came out this was the first one they released and i had already gotten from uh, j and j hobbies the Wrangler decals. Now, the guys at J&J &J were real good about trying to match up paints. Tester's Model Master French Blue was a perfect match for the Wrangler, and uh, Tester's Yellow, or might have been Model Master's Bright Yellow, was perfect, and I mean perfect match for the Yellow. So, um, the blue and the yellow were right there, and that made it easy. So uh, when I got over to the car, and by the way, this is the first car I ever opened the trunk on. I kept looking at the detail in the inside the trunk, and then I saw someone at a show that actually had the trunk lid open. It was out of box, but they cut it open, and uh, I, I really liked that, and I thought, wow, there's a lot of detail. And, and from being in the pits, I know what these things look like in the trunk, and I thought, well, how cool would that be to detail that? So um, I opened the trunk, and... Uh, did that as well. This one also had the MSC products um, detail materials products under the hood and in the trunk 
and I don't think I got a picture in the trunk of this one, but um, this was one of the first kind of out there. You really can't see in there with, with that one, but that was the first one that you really, it was kind of out there a little bit. A little bit of the engine detail you can see, and again, I wish I'd have taken more color pictures there, but I didn't. This next car was right when the um, Pontiac, the Valvoline Pontiac came out, and I wanted to do something unique in that uh, I knew there'd be a lot of these at some of the shows. So again, I went back to J&J &J Hobbies and I got a set of their Kodiak sheet. And these are great decals too. And uh, Fred Caddy made a really nice set as well. But I opened the trunk and this was the first car I ever did with wheels off. And um, instead of stick, sticking it up on jack stands, I thought I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I left the right side tires on and I used an R&D Unique pewter um, jack. And I modified it to look more like a stock car, the lightweight jack. And uh, just had it jacked up on the driver's side. And the disc brakes, I think were detail master. They were spun aluminum. I'm not sure. The center hubs were um, acrylic rod that I cut down and I used triple zero 120 brass rod to make the uh, the studs. But again, this one has the MSC products all underneath the hood. And before detail master, model car garage, all that stuff, MSC was the first one on the scene. And they had it all. They had braided line, they had uh, heater hose, uh, the AN fittings. Now the AN fittings, you had to work a little bit because the AN fittings were made of brass and they were on a brass sprue. So you not only had to cut them off of that sprue, but you had to drill them out from there. But man, they were worth it. When you, you went through that headache, it, they were really worth it in the long run. And uh, here's a shot of the side with the wheels on it and uh, the nuts that are on there holding the wheels on. So those were actually removable that way. Um, here's a look under the hood. You see some of the uh, braided line and all that stuff. The return springs were scratch built and uh, it, it, was, um, it was a fun build. I really enjoyed this one. And this one was also, and here's another look at the, um, the rear disc brakes and the exhaust dumps, by the way, um, were K&S aluminum. And toward the end down there, I just took a, um, um, a very small piece of wood and just lightly tapped them until I, I flattened them out a little bit. And uh, I think they turned out really well. There's a close look at that R&D unique jack again, too, there. And you notice the window nets, I always had them folded down. For the most part, I folded them down on the inside of the car. Um, I, just just the way I wanted them. But uh, it was really cool. And the thing that was unique with this car, it was the very first car that I ever had in any kind of magazine. Um, in the uh, 1989 contest annual for uh, Scale Auto, it... Uh, it made the book, and you know what gets me is I don't even remember them being there, uh, or anybody asking me to to get it photographed. But uh, uh, maybe they just went around and did it. But uh, I was surprised when that book came out, but uh, pleasantly so. But uh, that was really cool. But the first one ever in a magazine. And uh, next up was a car that I found very unique. I walked around in the pits at. Um, I can't remember. It was at one of the short tracks and looked over this car that Kyle was driving in the Bush series on one Saturday and it was sponsored by Ames department stores. And I thought, now how cool is that? It, um, in the pictures, it looks red, red, but it was kind of a lightish red. Um, it, but it was really, really cool with a dark blue stripe. And the unique thing with this thing that really got me was that it had um, around each of the letters and the numbers. And again, you can't really see it in these pictures, but it, it's bordered in almost like petty blue edge around the numbers and the letters, and then a shadow, a darker shadow behind that, um, which you'll see on the decal sheet. But I started off with this one with the peak, Kyle's peak car, 
uh, Pontiac and uh, again a set of the J and J decals and in the decal sheet you can see here that it's kind of you you see the more petty blue and then the darker behind that uh, it's really a cool set of decals and we're gonna talk about that uh, at the end here too a little bit and then here's the car you can really see it a little better here and I don't think it does it as much justice either there but uh, you can see the petty blue a little bit around it but this turned out to be just a really cool car I took uh, I think it was guards red model master guards red and then added an entire bottle of um, model master bright white um, to come up with this and you'd think automatically that would make pink but it actually lightened it up and I really like the color so that's the way I went with it and with the that dark blue stripe the white stripes uh, bordered and then the numbers this thing was just a really sharp car uh, I don't know why I didn't open the hood and let you see it because I was tickled to death with the engine on it too by the way all the tires on these cars the raised lettering was sanded off and I have one of the uh, replicas and miniatures of Maryland or a number of them actually stencils and uh, these were actually stenciled onto the tire on the uh, Kodiak car and the other cars coming up too. They're actually, uh, the stencils laid over them and then they're airbrushed with some acrylic uh, white paint very lightly dusted on there. Um, and another look at the front end here. I just thought this was such a cool car, especially when I was walking around it. Next up, is a good old-fashioned MPC kit from way back. Um, I was at a show and I think about 82 or 83 and I ran across this thing and I had to have it and it was still sealed. And I know Matthew Inman uh, over at Model Car Videos ago, oh, you didn't cut that open. Yes, I did, Matt. <laughs> and I built it. The decals were in pretty rough shape because it was a uh, pretty old kit and the box was a little banged up. Uh, so I got a set of Fred Caddy's decals for those and uh, rebuilt the car. And I was very tickled with a paint job on this one. Now this one was before we had a lot of the paint companies we have today. So um, I had to mix the Petty Blue and I had enough pictures and been around enough Petty cars that I was praying I did it right and uh, had to mix the Petty Blue and it, it actually I think it turned out pretty well and it was a good slick paint job um, after I sanded it out. Back then you had a Millennium 2000 polishing kit which has got the same grits as most of them do today and uh, this was I think one of the about the second or third car I'd used that kit on and it really really worked out well. Uh, I wish I'd have gone back in there and done the uh, the ribbing up underneath the deck lid but uh, hey I'm getting ready to do another one anyway. Um, this one by the way along with uh, Torino you're gonna see here in just a few minutes. When I was moving I have a, a buddy that that is just an absolute petty fanatic like myself and uh, as far as I know, he still has these cars. And um, I really always, as you, you guys that have been watching for a while know that the 70 flat nose, and I love the Superbird, but the 70 flat nose and the 71 are my two all time favorite petty cars. Um, but what an awesome car. And this one um, in 1990, the AMS, the Automotive Model Society, had their national convention in Charlotte um, called Thunder in Carolina because this was also the same year that Days of Thunder came out. So um, I went to their national convention and this car made the magazine in pre-71. I think it was first place in pre-19 uh, or 71 or earlier. And... Um, it was a really fun build. I really enjoyed it. Next up is another petty car. And this one I started off with a Johan Torino. Now the only thing I used out of this was, well, I used everything in this kit except the body. Um, and from there I used, or as the body goes, I used the 69 Ford Torino Cobra, not the Talladega, but the Cobra, 
which was the first one that when Petty went to Ford in 69, uh, that's what they went with before the Talladega. And I grabbed again some Fred Caddy decals along with some uh, J&J once again decals. I miss those guys. I really do. Um, and I built this. Um, 1969 Torino Cobra and again I opened the uh, trunk this one I think I think I built this one in in um, 87 um, somewhere in that ballpark anyway and here's a look from the back um, did the ribbing underneath the deck lid uh, trunk and put a Petty Enterprises license plate on it just because they were on the Fred Caddy decal sheet. Uh, the passenger side view. And here's a look under the hood. And this one had the 429. And again, this is the Johan um, chassis, everything. And it, it made it up, wheelbase, everything. It made it up to the uh, AMT body just fine, just fine. And a look inside the trunk. And usually when I took it to a show uh, or to display somewhere, model meetings, that kind of stuff, I had an old AMT trailer and I just put a Ford decal and some of the Fred Caddy Petty Enterprise decal on it, painted it the same color. And uh, that's the way I displayed it. I just thought it was cool to display that way with it uh, on the trailer. Next up, Another Pontiac, and this one I started off once again with the uh, Valvoline Pontiac. And again, the uh, Fred Caddy decals. And the STP sheet from J&J Hobbies, as well as J&J Hobbies 43 deca 42 and 43 decal sheet. Um, I really liked, uh, because... Being a Petty fan, I, I really like the cars that have more Petty Blue on them than anything else. So the 89 car was right up my alley. And um, this is the 1989 Pontiac, and this is a short track car. Uh, again, the wheels are stenciled. It's an R&D unique jack that's painted Petty Blue. And again, I like the, uh, the way that turned out on the uh, Kodiak car so well that I decided to do the same thing and display it that way. And here's a look from down the driver's side and a little bit under the hood. We'll get a closer look at the engine here in a minute. Here's uh, another look at that engine. And I was really tickled to death. And again, this is that uh, hand-mixed paint that I did um, before we had uh, all of the paint companies that we have today. And the uh, hood hinge set or system uh, this is before Detail Master came out with their prop, propped ones. So this is just sheet plastic cut into small pieces and, and glued on there. And uh, I think it did pretty well. And this, again, is all MSC products. Now, at this time, Detail Master had already come out. So a lot of the fittings that I used to use with MSC are now Detail Master on this car. Um, and I think uh, they turned out pretty well. The cool thing with this car was the black wheels, um, and like I said, there was more petty blue than anything else on it. Um, this one, you get a little better look at, at how the paint, how smooth the paint was with that polishing kit. And guys, if you'll just spend a little bit of time, it doesn't take a lot, you can get, you can buff out a car and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, they they really do look good. They're, the sanding kits and the polishing kits are well worth it. Um, in this picture, you can see a little bit of the interior. I didn't have it lit up enough. You can see the safety nets folded down on the inside again. And you notice the, the color of the STP sticker up front. And then look at the roof uh, oval. Well, on this particular car, the 43 on the oval on the roof matched the body color the lower the day glow on the bottom of the body so this i use the uh fred caddy and by the way fred caddy decals even though if you're familiar with them they are layered you put the white down you put the sometimes you'd have three different color decals that you layered on top of each other but they were very opaque 
and they fit just beautifully. Um, and they were very thin to be that opaque. So what I did was I put the white oval down first. I took the the darker red oval, dusted with the airbrush, some flat white over it, shot the same day glow that I put on the bottom of the body on there, applied that decal, smoothed it a little bit, put the 43, and then clear coated that. Now, for the most part, I don't do do clear coats on these vintage cars because if you walk up to the older cars and you run your finger down it you can feel where that vinyl decal that vinyl number is they're not cleared over so uh and i know there'll be people arguing with me about that a little bit too but look i've been around enough of them <laughs> but anyway uh i was tickled with the way that turned out uh it, it was really cool here's a look in the trunk i used to use back then um, Tygon, and I could get clear Tygon um, hose. And over time, however, that, that has changed. If you find Tygon today, or at least around here, if I find any, it is kind of a, a yellow color. Um, thank goodness I still have tons of this stuff, but I don't really use it that much anymore. But um, you can see the fuel cell there. And this is before it was mandatory that they were red and all that stuff. And a look underneath at the chassis. Um, and there wasn't a whole lot of detail back then on those. On, well, there wasn't on this one anyway. And here's a black and white shot of that rear suspension. The springs. Um, and I handmade those springs. The... Um, brake discs were detail master and the acrylic rod again was made to do the hub and triple zero one twenty nuts and bolts uh, for the studs and the wheel nuts and there's your look at uh, the right side with the wheel nuts holding the tires on and this one once again uh, I took to the AMS Nationals in Charlotte and it once again made the magazine and of course i was tickled to death with that too next up is uh alumina right when the luminas first came out the first ones that monogram released were the days of thunder luminas and i had something particular in mind so i grabbed up one of the hardy's luminas and went over to my hobby shop and lo and behold they had the j and j decals or excuse me, the Slicks decals in this case, the Slicks decals for the Good Wrench Lumina. And I was tickled to death. I uh, wanted to do this car, and I always try to get different companies too. So I got the Fred Caddy set as well. I ordered that one because there's always some unique stuff on each decal sheet. Uh, for different races or configurations. So I went ahead and, and got that too and set out on Illumina. And back then I didn't do the in-progress pictures like I, I started doing later on. Uh, I wish I did because this thing was, at the time I built this, the most advanced I ever did. Because this one with the shock absorbers, I used aluminum, K&S, and uh, straight pins for the shafts. And I made the, uh, the couplers where they mount and the... Uh, just a lot of advanced stuff in this one. Uh, even dabbled with a figure, a couple of uh, figures, and, and uh, as you see one of them here, he's really in the way though. Um, I, this one was one of those that I was so tickled with paint. I painted the car Tester's flat black, and I used Tester's enamel and airbrushed, uh, clear enamel and airbrush back over it, and then just massage this body I don't know how long I did it, but the uh, if you've ever seen Hendrick cars of that era up close, they were like glass. The paint was just unreal, and I really wanted to replicate that, and, and I was tickled to death that I kind of pulled that off. Um, this is a shot of it under the um, with a mirror not under it, and a uh, decent shot of the engine. Uh, we'll get another look at that in a minute. Uh, again, the... Uh, the brakes were the detail master and um, with the acrylic rod and, um, hubs and the triple zero 120 threaded rod. 
Now this one, you can see down the side there how slick that paint is. Uh, again, I was just absolutely blown away with how, how clear um, that simple. And this is enamel, guys. This is all testers enamel. Uh, flat black with that uh, clear over it. And it really turned out well. And I'm more of a lacquer guy, but I, I this one, I really liked it. Uh, did the ribbing under the trunk. Um, put a lot of work into this one, too. Um, I was privileged to see this car up close at a uh, on display at a local dealership. And the, he had the hood and the trunk open, so I got uh, a good look at everything. And this has the duct work underneath it for the, the brake cooling hoses and all that stuff. Um, this one is just another picture of it in the album. Uh, picture under the hood in the front of the car and this one I'm not really sure why I took it it was in the case that I displayed it in and I have no clue why I did that next up is something a little unique when Monogram came out with their IndyCar series I was intrigued by the cars didn't know that much about them but I thought eh, you know well let's get one so I did and I had two sets of Fred Caddy uh, Tide decals. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to have some fun with this thing. So I took it and I came up with this. Um, a Tide March IndyCar. I painted it in the Dayglow orange and faded some yellow back across and then faded it into white. And... Um, this was a fun project and used the number threes out of the uh, kit. And I used the uh, Hendrick Motorsports decals off of there to make it like a Hendrick Motorsports uh, car. And as you can see here, actually you can't see here very well, but uh, the engine is fully wired and plumbed, uh, braided lines, everything all over the place. And it was really just done for fun. I don't know if you can see very well in these pictures, but I used the tire stencils I have for Hoosier to put Hoosier tires on it instead of the Bridgestones or the Goodyears or anything like that. Um, just for fun. Just for fun. A fictitious car, but eh, that's all right. And it also made uh, Scale Auto's contest annual uh, in 1989. And in this, well, in this picture, even though they're black and white, you can see the Hoosier tire stencils on there. Um, but this was just a really, really, really fun project. I really appreciated uh, uh, Fred Caddy coming out with those decals because it made it fun. Now, I, I need some help, guys. There is a car that I've always wanted to do, and I have not been able to find the decals. But somebody out there probably has a few sets, and I'm willing to, to buy them. Uh, if you know somebody that has them, please put them in touch with me. I am, I am interested. I need two sets each of these decals. Uh, first of all, this peak uh, Kyle Petty car is it's a little bit darker than Petty Blue, even though it looks like it is here with the pink stripe around it, sponsored by Peak Antifreeze. And uh, I want to do this car, and I want to do it up. So... Um, I would really like a set of these decals. J&J &J made, made them, as you see here. I never bought these, and I don't know why, because I always wanted to do the car. I guess I always thought, well, I'll be able to get them. Well, apparently not anymore. Um, but I would really like a set of these. If any of you guys know where I can run across one, uh, a couple of sets, I really am I'm interested. Um, and I thank you in advance for it. And another one is going back to that Ames car. Uh, that's another one when I was moving that someone else ended up with. And uh, I really don't know why I did that because I always liked that car. Um, but I really would like to redo the Ames car to display with the Peak car because those were, you notice the paint jobs were similar as far as the striping goes. And um, the Bush car, the Ames car was one that uh, they ran that same year. And again, there's a look at those Ames decals again. And I would love to get two sets of these if they can be found. Every now and then I'll see them on eBay and um, I either miss them or uh, one time I ordered them and they never came. So, uh, oh well. But I am interested in, in the peak 
or the Ames decals if anybody's got a couple of cents uh, that they'd be willing to part with. Guys, that's all I've got in the stock cars. Um, I've got some other ones on rolls of film that I haven't had developed, which I can only pray are still good. Uh, that's all I've got in that photo album. The only other thing in that photo album are some police cars that I built as well as uh, uh, a couple other rods and stuff. But as far as stock cars go, that's all that's in that album. And um, I appreciate you tagging along, looking at these. It was good to, to go back and reminisce on some of these again, too. Um, if you have not visited the Teespring store, we've got a lot of new stuff over there. And um, the Cup Series stuff, which, again, I've, that's upcoming, and we'll, we'll be talking about that in the future here shortly, actually. Um, but if you're not a subscriber, head on over there. Give us a subscription. Throw that, Hit that thumbs up button for sure. And um, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming stuff. I'm uh, going to be getting back to the gasser. I've, when I get back in the, the shop, uh, hopefully the AC will be back up maybe tonight. Um, when I get back in the shop, I have two commission things that I'm working on that I, I'm going to try to wrap up in the next day or so. And then I'm going to share with you the progress on the gasser and all that kind of stuff. But um, guys, thanks so much again for stopping by. Thanks for watching. And I hope you have an awesome, awesome weekend. God bless. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Thank you.